What's up, what's up? It is another video on the BMW E36. If you didn't see the last video, new drift build. So we are going to be pulling the motor out, doing a conversion, uh, trying to do a cheap build sort of thing. Not the biggest fan of BMWs, just cause this thing's always been giving me grief. Um, the door car gets jammed. So it's all broken and stuff like that. And the other day I opened it up Got in the car, didn't realize I did not shut it. So it was like half shut. I took off around this corner right here and my Navara was sitting where the patrol is right there. And the door swung open and smashed into my bull bar. Um, but I'm very surprised at how hard the hit was and how little damage it was. So it gives me some confidence for when we are on the track and I've got people you know, crashing into me or me crashing into them. So hopefully she holds up strong against other cars. But yeah. We are going to start ripping into pulling the motor out. I'm not going to get very far tonight because it's already about 7 o'clock. We're just going to you know, start working on it, start pulling things apart and see how we go. Pretty sure you can unbolt these rads, uh, top rad supports. So that'll be awesome. I bet you everything is going to break. Yeah, look at that. If anyone wants to buy this motor, uh, hit my line um, or else I'm just going to throw it out. Maybe. Maybe I'll see if the wreckers want it. I uh, have a someone from NZ lined up who wants a gearbox, but I don't know, it's gonna be probably more effort to um, pack and send it to New Zealand than it is to just throw in the dumpster. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, the last motor I had that I didn't want, no one wanted was a RB20E and an auto, and I kind of wish I kept that, but I, yeah, straight to the dumpster, straight to the tip. Should have heard the bang it made when the dump truck buddy pulled it over. Echo for days. Anyway, enough talk, I'm gonna see how I go pulling this thing out actually we'll get one quick look at it last look at it as a complete car complete running car before we start tearing into this thing pulling it apart and probably never putting it back together again she's nasty as been sitting for way too long oh bit of top bit of bloody grass and stuff inside the rim overall it's a pretty clean base so that is cool it's definitely gonna look much cooler I reckon when we're done with it don't have big big plans for body kit and wheels and all that stuff as of yet because again not a big fan of these cars so when it starts sounding cool and driving a bit better maybe then I'll start um, doing like an M3 body kit or something like that who knows honestly I reckon I'll probably just drop it on a sass new wheels and that'll be it for me uh, maybe respray it because I have a I've seen a couple of these that have been resprayed and they look amazing. Says the guy who doesn't like BMWs. Anyway, the colour can look good and this thing is actually covered with overspray because when I painted Kalani's Laurel, I painted it out the back of the shed and I had this thing like right next to it and it has overspray galore. Let's see if, I can, if you can feel it or hear it. Yeah, it's all overspray. Silver overspray with pink metal flake when I've done her engine bay. When I resprayed her engine bay and put a bit of uh, metal flake through it and all that crap. Anyway, I'm talking so much bull crap, man. I'm so sorry. Everyone's poor ears. Alright, let's pull this thing apart. Alright, we're back, baby. Uh, back with the glare for one, so I do apologise. It is sunny as hell. Super hot. Struggling right now. But we're back in, ripping into the BMW. I just posted the video of the scram pipe of the 33. Hopefully it's all good, good video. I noticed there was a bit of, um, uh, the light was a bit flickery in one of the one of the clips. And I hope it's not like that for all of them, but hopefully not. Anyway, we're gonna start pulling the front end apart of this thing, get on the hoist, uh, drain some fluids, hopefully get the engine out today. No one me, but I doubt it's gonna get out today. We'll try, I'll try my hardest. But it's already a bit of a late start. It's already about 2 o'clock. So, yeah. I need to straighten this thing up. As you can see, a bit of an angle. Um, she be right. I'll get it on there. Um, but, yeah, this thing's looking pretty nasty. If anyone, if anyone wants it, slide my DMs. Take it off my hands. Anyone has some um, more wheels? Because I'm going to need to get a, a few more sets of these. What else? Door cards. Yeah, anyway. I'm gonna get this on hoist, start pulling into it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna time lapse it, I'm just gonna bloody get that ass in there. Um, for the rest of this video, we'll just drag on forever, just like all my other videos. 
back into working. Whoop! Ooh, there we go. Got a fair bit off now. Trying to pull it all apart without breaking anything. Very difficult, especially when you have no idea what you're doing. So I had to look on a bit of, um, had to look on YouTube a little bit to find some things, but with the front nose, whatever you call this bit here, support bolts plus there's bloody spot weld. I don't get why there's only one spot weld either side. It makes no sense. So I just drilled that out, so I would pull it off. Pulled the condenser off, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run with the motor we're running and the radio and all that stuff. We'll have to find out, see. Um, now to the wiring. So I'll quickly just film the gearbox oil coming out. Just so everyone does want it, they can see it's bloody pristine. Oof. Damn, someone's clapping them cheeks. Smells all right. So that is good there. Slowly getting there. Got um, most of the loom apart. Um, now I'm pulling the exhaust off. I was almost considering about leaving this back part on and just making the new exhaust to this, but I'm not too sure yet. I'm not too sure. There we go. Like I said, I knew I wasn't gonna get it all out, but I have got all, uh, all the loom done, fluids all dropped, tail shaft, exhaust off. That's pretty much ready to come out. I just have to disconnect the linkage, linkages up here. And I'm pretty certain, oh, linkages and fuel line, slave line, and that is it, I believe. Obviously under the engine mounts and all that, and it should come straight out, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow or the next day. But I'll see you guys in a moment when I get back to working on this thing in the next couple of days. Ah. Well, that was a bit of a f***ing ordeal. Got it out, 11 minutes. Oh, the pain in the ass. The, um, the header's basically stuck on this, which I pretty much just jacked up as hard as I can to get it out. Um, oh, I didn't pull that off. That makes sense. But it's gonna be a perfect spot for a brand new motor to go into, which we will reveal in just a moment. I'll get this thing outside, clean up a little bit, get the chains off, and I'll get the new motor on the stand. Engine out now. Wash it all down. Got the engine mounts and gearbox mounts off and clean. I realise I have to pull the whole intake manifold off because I need to get the loom out just for my mate who's going to do the wiring. He said he might need it. Whatever it is what it is. But um, it's looking pretty fresh. Gearbox looks body brand spanking. Not bad. I did damage this little shield a little bit getting it out i don't care doesn't matter it's like it means anything but hopefully have this thing sold um hopefully get a good good bit of money for it till that'll pay for a little bit towards the, the new engine and all that stuff <laughs> got the throttle body off um 
gearbox mount, engine mounts, might need them. Here we go, the big reveal. Got the engine right here on the stand. Uh, I've dummied up some things on it. I don't, know, I don't even want to show it to be honest. Here we go. Yes, there we go. I think it was pretty obvious what I was going to do. I've had this motor sitting for a while. Um, I bought it when I first got my sedan, my street car, because I was going to pull the 25 out of that and put this in it, because this is a RB25DE Neo out of an R34. Um, they're a bit higher compression, they're solid head. They are no, they still have VCT, but the VCT is internal instead of being external, like your typical uh, Series 1, Series 2 motors. Um, it has had the block drilled and tapped for a turbo drain. I probably will end up doing down the track. I think it was a pretty low K engine, doesn't really matter. I probably will change the time belt just because. Ah, you know, we'll see how we go. A couple hundred bucks I don't want to spend. Definitely get a bit of a service. Like, look at this, it's been. Got a whole bunch of bull crap in the valley. Um, these are also just my mate's <laughs> covers I just chucked on for it to look pretty. But it looks pretty clean underneath. It's obviously been sitting. The cams and the lifters look fine, all that stuff. Bit dirty, needs a good uh, good pressure wash, which I probably will do now. Um, this is a hyper gear that came off my track car. So maybe down the track. Slap some head studs in it and we'll, we'll, we will chuck some boost in it, who knows. But the first mission we are going to deal with next video is going to be pulling the sump off and I have to reverse it. So I have to, I'm pretty much going to cut it um, with the flange and just, you know, just flip it. Sounds very easy. It's not going to be easy. I'm already um, dreading it. I can buy engine mount, sump, all that stuff from some dude in Western Australia for like $700 out of the one he built. Um, so we know they work. So I'm, I'm almost considering just doing that. Um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you reckon? Do you reckon I should try to do my own mounts, try to do my own sump, which will end up taking longer than if I just buy it all? Um, I'm really not sure. I would like to try it. I've never done engine mounts, but I'd like to give it a shot. It's going to be a bit of a pain. Like If you look here, this is where the heater, like what heater core comes out, the water tap is right. Whoops. Maybe I can mount it somewhere else. <laughs> okay, did not mean that. So is that the heater tap? I believe that's the heater tap. Sure it is. Well, if that's the heater tap, I can just mount it somewhere else then and just run these lines straight along there. Um, I don't know why there's three. I'll have to look into that. But I do want to keep the heater and the AC, which um, it's not looking good for the AC because with the motor in, it's going to sit pretty far forward. Anyway. I'm gonna quickly pull this thing out, give her a pressure wash, the engine and the motor, the engine and the car, sorry, because as you can see, all the grease and grime and all that stuff, this is disgusting. So I'll pull the ECU out and I will get to town, giving this thing a bit of, a bit of loving. I almost wanna do bearings on it while I have the sump off. I'll have a look and see what they look like, which won't be today on this video, so. Yeah, shout out to Dylan Morrison for uh, hooking me up with these uh, fancy covers just to take the photos on. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, enough bullshitting, talking, bullcrap. This guy's so annoying. Never knows when to shut up. Anyway, I'm going to push this thing out, wash it, and I'll see you guys in just a moment.
There we go. Just like that, this video is done. Uh, just pulling the motor out, getting this motor on the stand, cleaned up. Next job on the list is to start on the engine mount. So first thing I do is pull the sump off and then slot it into place, sort of figure out the right way it wants to sit. I'll try measure up the one in my truck car and sort of see if I can get it at the same sort of angle. Um, very nervous. I'm actually really nervous about doing this. I really think I should just buy those mounts now that I'm thinking about it. I thought about it a bit more. Um, but I'll see what um see what I come up with. Try to clean up a little bit better. Still a bit yucky um, everywhere. But I uh, tried to clean in the valley as much as I could. Cleaned it a fair bit, but I ended up getting water everywhere. I got it all in under the cam cover so i just just, just soaked it all in with wd-40 hopefully this doesn't take too long but i have a feeling this build is going to take a, a decent amount of time because it is a there is a lot involved um it's not just a quick slap a slap a motor in and away you go fuel lines have got to be changed on the other side i've got to do an abs delete um we'll see what we can do with these air con lines if we can feed them up or not um all the wiring is going to be a headache mounting the radiator is going to be a headache and if we can do the condenser which is looking unlikely but it should be it'd be cool if we could um well, look at this this is factory wiring bloody horrible bloody nissan doesn't do that good old nissan doesn't do that anyway so that's gonna be it for this video uh if you guys do like it and you want to see some more hit the subscribe button leave a like leave a comment let us know what you think if you're excited for this nugget build i guess i don't know excited for this bloody build whatever it is um hopefully it'll be an awesome drift car i'm gonna try and get some more stock wheels and oh yeah it's not going turbo either it's it's na i just done this for just for um uh thumbnail purposes and to make it a bit more appealing to the eye because it looks pretty nasty with nothing on there give me non-turbo fun little car that will be just gonna get destroyed anyway hopefully not hopefully we can keep it off those walls and out of people's uh out of people's doors but we'll see what happens got to try get a lock kit for it got to weld the diff do some seat seat mods as well as some steering wheel mods but we'll get there we'll get there anyway thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next video peace